Every year, up to 60 police officers lose their lives to criminals who use guns. So for police working the meanest streets of America's big cities, it's essential they get some bulletproof protection. So how do they make a thin, lightweight vest capable of stopping bullets? How do they do it? Philadelphia, 11 p.m. It's time for the boys from the 5th District to suit up for the last shift of the day, the graveyard shift. Ready, front. They know they're facing another night of dangerous work. Over the last 100 years, this district has lost more officers to gun crime than almost any other part of America. Watch your driving out there, be careful. Fall out, have a good night, we'll see you out there. All of these officers know that coming under fire is an occupational hazard. We just had an officer killed at the beginning of the summer. You can be the next one up there. In the most recent incident, Sergeant Jeffrey Seaman also came under fire. But he was luckier than his colleague, because he was saved by an extraordinary piece of clothing. Oh, cross your line, third night district, 322 Mannheim. I ended up chasing a male. Um, he ran into the, one into the abandoned buildings. Um, we went down to the basement, so when I came around the corner, he was right there, so he just put the gun right up against my vest and just pulled the trigger. Incredibly, despite being shot in the chest at point-blank range, Sergeant Seaman survived, thanks to his bulletproof vest. The idea of creating lightweight, flexible armour isn't new. The earliest forms were developed by the Japanese, who used thick wads of silk to stop low-velocity musket bullets. But in order to stop a high-velocity bullet from a modern gun, you need to create a piece of underwear that is both flexible and has the strength of steel. Here at Armour Holdings, they manufacture some of the most sophisticated flexible armour ever developed. The problem is to create a garment that's not just capable of stopping bullets, but is still lightweight and thin enough to work in, as company director Tim Smith explains. There's a number of materials that we use uh, in developing uh, soft body armor, and each of them have desirable characteristics. Modern lightweight body armor was first developed with Kevlar, a fabric invented to replace steel belts in car tires. Now other ballistic fabrics such as Spectra and Dyneema are also used, which weight for weight are an incredible five times stronger than steel thanks to their special type of weave. One of the things that you want to do is be able to dissipate energy. If it's held like this and you impact the side of it with a projectile, it has to propagate energy quickly up and down the length. In effect, the material works like a soccer net, spreading the bullet's impact out over a wide area. So rather than slice through the fabric, its energy is dispersed. Even so, one type of material alone isn't enough to stop a bullet. So armour utilised four different layers of fabric, each with slightly different properties. The man in charge of testing and studying the effects of gunshot on these materials is ballistics expert Bruce Weber. Here's a common woven material, and you notice it's a very coarse weave here. And uh, we put that weave out front. This first layer uses fibres called aramids, and these fibres are designed to stretch like spider silk, slowing the bullet down. Back here is a material from Russia. It's known as Autex. If you notice, it's a real tight, fine weave. This tight weave Artex will further slow the bullet, dissipating its energy. We've coupled it with a non-woven material, a polyethylene. These various layers aren't just designed to slow the bullet down. They also flatten its nose, taking away its ability to slice through the final layer. Each one of these materials has some strengths and weaknesses. But unlike cheap sportswear from your local mall, you certainly won't be finding any imperfectly made jackets in the bargain bin, because every one of these vests has to comply with strict government specifications. And there's just one way to do quality control. That's with a handgun. First, the vest is placed on a clay mannequin. Then it's shot at point-blank range and the results filmed with a slow-motion camera. Seen here in ultra-slow motion, it's possible to follow the bullet as it blasts from the gun at almost 250 metres a second. 
That's the same speed as a jumbo jet. When it strikes the vest, each individual layer of fabric acts to dissipate its force, causing waves to spread across its surface like ripples on the surface of water. When Bruce removes the jacket, the mark on the clay shows him how the bullet's energy has been spread and dissipated. The jacket has done what it's designed to do, and that is prevent the bullet penetrating the torso. Even so, the velocity of the bullet can cause serious internal injury, but hopefully the jacket will still have saved the victim's life. One other advantage of these extraordinary vests is that not only do they save lives, they also have the added bonus of preserving the bullet for evidence. This product truly does catch the bullet, and that's why there's probably 3,000 saves today. Armour have been making vests for the police force for 30 years. It's estimated they've saved 100 lives every year. You don't have no control over you know, maybe get hurt in a shop, but that's the one thing you have control over. You have control over going to your locker before work and putting that vest on. And it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but you know, it's, it's more comfortable than a hospital bed, so you kind of, you know, suck it up and wear it. Luckily for Sergeant Seaman, he was wearing a vest the day he came under fire. Without it, he wouldn't be here to tell the story.